Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro, and today I'm covering a real small sort of topic, but it is huge in the world of CSS, and that is CSS variables. Now, in the past, as many of you know, you would have to use a preprocessor of some sort like SAS in order to use the power of variables in your CSS, but now that's no longer the case. And we could see that if we switch over to caniuse.com, we could see currently it's at 87% supported. So there's a lot of support for it. It's only going to grow. And so therefore, you know, if you're a front end guy, it's something that's definitely worth considering and, and checking out in the future. Um, so of course, the big advantage to this being is that, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to use a preprocessor just for variable support. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, Coursetro.com, where you're going to find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free, and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six-pack each month. That's it. Now, also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube, and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so just to demonstrate how they work, I, I have open Visual Studio Code along with a, an empty folder. So just create an empty folder somewhere and open it up and you'll see the same screen here. So I'm gonna create a new file, just an index.html and then also another new file called main.css. And in our index.html, I'm gonna hit Control B to get rid of the sidebar. And let me make things large just so you can see them. I, I'm going to get some, just some starter HTML. So you could just, if you're using Visual Studio Code, just hit the exclamation point and enter. Okay, so also, by the way, make sure you check out the written version of the tutorial. If you want to just copy and paste some uh, HTML and CSS as we're working along here. And that of course is in the first link of the description here in YouTube. Okay, so uh, the next thing, the very first thing we wanna do is go ahead and just create uh, a reference here to our main.css file right here. All right, let's just go, let's rename this. I'm kind of like uh, compulsive about this, okay? And also our body tag here, I'm just going to put in some basic HTML to demonstrate the CSS portion. So div class equals wrapper, we'll say. Uh, we'll put in another container here. And then inside, we'll just have a few type elements. So like an H1 with my awesome CSS variables. All right, we'll also put in a paragraph. Um, at this point, I don't really want to sit here typing out a sentence, so I'm just going to copy and paste that content. And then also just a button, should you want to experiment further. I don't actually think I style this. Um, down here, I'm gonna have one more paragraph element and we'll use this to demonstrate CSS inheritance in terms of variables. So I'm another paragraph down here outside of that container class, okay? All right, so we'll save that. We're good to go there and let's go to our main CSS. So now the topic we've all been waiting for, how do you define an actual CSS variable? Well, very simple, all right? And it is quite different though, um, in co comparison to something like SAS. So what we do, you know, when it comes to SAS, you would put like your variable up here and define the property. Um, and here, you, when it comes to inherent CSS variables, you uh, have to specify them within a, uh, a rule set of some sort with a selector. So we're gonna use the root pseudo class here and we're going to put in a variable. So the way you start a variable or a custom property as it is technically, you start off with two dashes and then you give it a name. So we'll call this, this property name or this variable site hyphen BG. All right, and then we put a colon as if it's just a normal regular property and then a value. So we'll say F1E9C5, which is like a washed out yellow color. <clears throat> and so now in order to use it, we can, let's say we'll put, um, we'll, we'll put it on the body element. We'll make the background color the site BG property. So background and we'll say var. Now this is how you use the variable that we just defined above or the property. So we put var and we put in the name. All right, so if we want to see this in the browser, and 
don't worry, I'm gonna describe what's happening up here momentarily. So let me hit Control B to get this up, reveal an explorer, and just double click. And again, let me get rid of that. There we go. We can see we now have the background changing and this demonstrates, of course, that the CSS, the custom property or variable is now working. Before, of course, you can never have done this without a preprocessor. Okay, so when you add or you define a custom property on, say for instance, this root, the sudo class here, that means that all of the elements within the HTML document are going to have access to this property defined right here. All right, so that also means logically that you can apply this to other selectors, so such as body, uh, such as um, like maybe just a paragraph. And you'll see if you did save this as right here, if you left this as a paragraph, this would no longer work because this right here doesn't have access to this this paragraph. It's not it's it's not a child element of it. All right, so let's uh, switch back and go back real quick. And now let's go ahead and actually give a better demonstration of inheritance <clears throat> when it comes to CSS variables. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is like going crazy. So <clears throat> you can define these CSS variables on these other selectors, not just root, as I mentioned. So let's say, for instance, that we want only the type within our container element to be bold outside of, say, this one. So to do that, let's go ahead and we'll say on container, we'll define a property called type weight and it will be bold. All right, so then let's go ahead and say container and we'll also add wrapper and we'll say font weight. And again, we use the var function here and we pass in type weight. All right, so all we're saying is we're, we're making the font weight bold. All right, and we're doing it for both the container and the wrapper. All right, so you would think, okay, I, we see that wrapper, inside of wrapper is a paragraph element, but inside a container is another paragraph element. So it's gonna make both of them bold. All right, well, if we save that, wrong one, and go here, we'll see just the top one is bold and not the bottom one, which is contained within the wrapper class. And that's because we've only defined the actual value of type weight inside of container and not wrapper. All right, so to also uh, d demonstrate another uh, feature of this function right here, uh, we can use what are called CSS variable fallback values. So what we can do is uh, when we have this variable and we're passing in a custom property, we can put a comma for a second argument in which we can specify a fallback value if this is not defined right here. So we can just say bold. So if we save that, refresh, and there we go, this one is now bold. All right, so a, I mean, that's basically how the CSS variables work in a nutshell. They're very simple, there's not much to it. However, we can also access uh, the CSS variable property or in the values as and we can also set them within JavaScript itself. So just to demonstrate this real quickly, we'll just use uh, vanilla, vanilla JavaScript as it's called, just raw JavaScript down here. And the first thing we have to do is we'll say, we'll get the body element. So document.query selector body. And then we'll say, if we just want to get it, then we'll say, okay, my var equals get compute, computed, not computed, computed st style of body. And we'll say get property value. And what's the name of the property? Well, site BG is one of them that we created, the first one. And just to show that we have the actual value of it, we can console log my var. So now if we go back here, hit control shift I to get the console and refresh, we could see right there is the actual background color. 
We can also set it through JavaScript as well. So for instance, I let's go ahead. We'll set it body.style.set property. The property is site BG and the value that we want to set it to, we'll make it a new value obviously, is we'll say FFCCOO, which is like a yellow orangeish color, I believe. And then we'll just leave this here as well. And we'll still console log it to show that the property or the variable value has been overwritten. So to this, to this value right here. So if we save, we go back, we'll see it right there. That's the initial one, refresh, and there we go. All right, so just a very quick rundown. As you can see, it's really simple to use these, but it's a really big topic. I mean, how long has CSS been around? Like you know, 25 plus years or whatever. Uh, and so, you know, with that said, it's been a long time coming. I mean, they, they should have had these, I mean, in my estimation, a long time ago, uh, but it's only gonna get better. So in the world of CSS, exciting things are kind of happening with the CSS grid. Uh, that's, you know, pretty much at the same level of support. If you, even if you check out caniuse.com and now the variables. All right, so make sure you check out coursecetra.com, subscribe here if you haven't yet, and I'll see you real soon.